Bonjour la classe et bienvenue à la leçon pour aujourd'hui. So today we're going to read some more of Heidi. Um, so you need to be able to watch this video where I explain some of the different things and I read the book to you and, and that kind of thing. Um, you also will be updating your French notes like based on the reading from today. So you need to be able to have access to that, whether it's on paper or online. And there's a Google form, which is your participation and your attendance for today. So make sure that you are, you have all three of those things available to you. Um, so by the end of class today, you will create a two truths and one lie kind of quiz. So instead of answering a quick quiz, you're actually going to create the questions yourself um, and based on the narrative of Heidi, based on what we read today. Um, after reading and listening with the class. So if you're in class, you're doing it all together. If you're watching this video, then I'm doing it with you, guiding you through it. Okay, so um, on your Google form, there are these questions. I want you to have a little think. Um, you can read through or not read, but um, skim over the first couple of pages of Heidi um, if you want, or just do this in based off entirely off your memory. Um, but last week, when we read the first couple of pages of Heidi, um, we got the background and the beginning, beginnings of the story. So can you answer these questions for me? Number one, who died in the book? Who did Heidi go to live with? And where? You don't have to answer that where on the Google form, but you can if you know it. And then um, just give me a very brief description of Heidi and her grandfather. So try and do this based off memory. Have a look through the book, even if you're just um, like skimming over and don't take more than five minutes on answering these. Pause the video and then come back. Okay, so once you're back with me, um, and if you didn't know the answers to these, then I'm gonna talk to you about them <laughs> a little bit. So number one, who died. So at the beginning of the book, we find out that Heidi's mom, mother dies, which in French is mère. Okay, so she refers to it as mère, and then she says maman, and her mom basically gets sick, dies, passes away. Um, and there's a funeral for her. So then, numéro deux, Heidi then goes to live with her grandfather, which in French is grand-père. But, and a few of you asked this question um, last week, like you weren't quite sure on the understanding, but she's never met her grandfather before. So she doesn't know him. And he's never met her. He doesn't know who she is. And so she's very anxious. She's obviously, remember, only four years old. So she's very small and she doesn't, she's kind of scared, nervous, anxious. In the book, it talks about anxious, anxious um, about going to live with him because she's never met him before. And she has to go somewhere. It's not in like the same area. So he actually lives up in the mountains um, in a very small house, like a little cabin. And so that's that part. <laughs> And then describing, so you could describe Heidi as her age. She is four. Um, she is in that end part of the second page. It talks about adorable, so adorable, cute. Um, she's small. And then her grandfather, it talks about having une barbe, which is a beard, so a long gray beard. He's also not rich. He uh, lives in a small, modest house. Um, and he's sad. So it talks about how both of them actually aren't happy. So Heidi's not happy because her mom dies. The grandfather's not happy because his daughter died. And um, he lives by himself, I guess. So until she, Heidi comes to live with him. So, and he's, it talks about serious and severe face. So just a very like, um, serious, lonely, sad person. And that's the beginning of the book. That's what we've read so far. Okay, so let's move on and look at what we're doing for today. So today we're going to read again and I've upped the time a little bit to 10 minutes. So last week was just the beginning just to get used to it, just five minutes. And you probably felt like I didn't get to read a whole lot during that time. So today we're going to read 10 minutes and at the end there's a few things that we're going to do with that. 
after you've read by yourself for 10 minutes, I'm going to read to you. Um, so what I want you to do is pause the video. Um, go ahead and set your timer for 10 minutes. Read from Heidi as much as you can. And if you need a quick refresher of where Heidi is, let's see if I can hmm, share this with you. Hopefully you can see here, there's a few different places that you can go to get it, but the best way would be right here where it says click access for, click here for access, click on this and it will take you to, to Heidi. Okay, so pause the video, set your timer for 10 minutes and just read um, without using a dictionary or looking anything up in the quiet and silence um, as much as you can. Then come back to the video. Okay, so for the second part, we're moving on to, oh, before we move on to Numa Hunter, I, uh, I want you to write down all the cognates you see. It says all the cognates. It, I don't think we have time for all the cognates necessarily. So I, on the Google form, I just want from what you read, not from the first two pages, because that was last week, but from this point onwards, what you've read, um, just show me some cognates that you read um, and then and then we'll move on to reading together as a class. So again, a cognate is a word which looks the same in English as it does in French. So an example, not from the book, so don't write this, but an example is chocolat. Chocolat looks just like chocolate because in English we have the E on the end. That is an example of a cognate. So what cognates are you seeing there? Just show me a few examples in a Google form and then come back to the video. Okay, class, we're going to move on to numero deux, and I'm going to read to you, and this is going to be powerful for you so that you can listen to the pronunciation, how the words sound since you've been reading. That's fantastic for your spelling, your grammar, um, learning at a slower pace, like new words and stuff, but you don't know how they sound. So listen for pronunciation, um, check your understanding as we go through, and when it says participate with me, I'm going to throw out some questions. You can respond to those questions with me. And then, um, and then we'll move on with what else we're doing. So, okay. So we, last week we got up to this page right here um, where it says, and, and yeah, and, and we've just recapped that. I'm going to skip over page six and just briefly um, update you that page six, basically Heidi meets this old woman who knew her mother when she was little and um, kind of would tell her stories about her mother and how generous and kind she was as a person. And Heidi loved listening to those stories. Okay, so she, Heidi would explore the mountains and this was one of the people that she met during that time. And we're going to start reading from page seven. So you can just watch this video and follow along with me. Um, or you can read on your own copy if you prefer that and just be listening to the video. But I am going to kind of point along where we are. So you might find it more useful to do this. OK, on you go. Heidi aimait sa vie dans les montagnes. Jour après jour, Heidi explorait les montagnes. Pardon, class. I got caught up in the middle of something right there. So I'm going to start again. Um, and let's see if I just use this. Oh, nope. That doesn't work. I'm really sorry. I apologize for this. I'm trying to record in a, somebody else's house and it's pretty loud. So I'm going to start again. <laughs> Heidi aimait sa vie dans les montagnes. Jour après jour, Heidi explorait les montagnes. Elle aimait la nature, l'oxygène frais, la brise relaxante, les animaux adorables. Un jour, Heidi a rencontré un garçon. Elle lui a dit, Low regard class, Heidi a rencontré un garçon. Alors, rencontré, c'est bonjour. Alors, écoutez. Elle lui a dit, bonjour, je m'appelle Heidi. Ça, c'est rencontré. 
Bonjour. J'habite avec mon grand-père sur cette montagne. Le garçon a dit, Bonjour, je m'appelle Peter. Mais Peter était triste. Il était orphelin. Il n'avait pas de famille. Il était très pauvre. Alors, regarde, classe. Parce que Peter, il n'a pas de famille. Il n'a pas de mère ou de père. Alors, il était orphelin. En regardant Peter, Heidi a pensé l'histoire de sa mère. Sa mère était généreuse. Inspirée par sa mère, Heidi a eu une idée. Elle a dit, voilà du pain. Alors, regarde, classe, ça, c'est du pain. On mange du pain. Elle et elle a donné, elle a donné son pain à Peter. Class, qu'est-ce que c'est du pain en anglais? Is it pain or is it bread? It's bread, oui, du pain, c'est du bread. Très bien. Finalement, Peter et Heidi sont devenus de bons amis. Alors, ils sont amis. Heidi jouait avec Peter. Alors, classe, jouer, c'est le verbe. Jouer au jeu vidéo, jouer au basket, jouer au foot, jouer. Heidi jouait avec Peter. Ils avaient de grandes aventures sur la montagne de grand-père. Heidi aimait l'aventure. Class Heidi aimait ou elle n'aimait pas? Elle aimait, c'est le verbe aime. Heidi aime l'aventure. Passé. Heidi aimait l'aventure. Elle aimait jouer. Jour après jour, elle passait du temps dans les montagnes avec Peter et grand-père. Le temps passé. Le 25 novembre, Noël est arrivé. Alors, classe, c'est quelle date spéciale le 25 décembre? Le 25, c'est la célébration de Noël. Alors, classe, en anglais, comment on dit Noël? Oui, bien sûr. Le Noël, en français, c'est anglais. C'est Christmas en anglais. Grand-père avait une surprise. Grand-père a donné un traîneau à Heidi. Alors, regarde, classe, ça c'est l'image, le traîneau. Grand-père a donné à Heidi un traîneau. Heidi s'est exclamé, merci grand-père, j'aime le traîneau. Le soir de Noël, Heidi a aidé Peter. Le, le traîneau... Bon, hi, Peter a aidé Heidi. Le traîneau était difficile à naviguer. Hmm, difficile à naviguer. Mais Peter était un expert. Heidi aimait jouer dans les montagnes. Un jour, Grandpa a expliqué. Ici, ce sont les Alpes. Les Alpes sont les montagnes les plus majestueuses d'Europe. Alors, les Alpes, les montagnes, sont les, sont les montagnes les plus, like, très, très, très majestueuses d'Europe. Heidi était heureuse. Elle aimait son grand-père. Elle aimait Peter. Elle aimait sa vie dans les Alpes. OK, class, we're going to stop there. Pause. 
and we're going to go back and do some activities with what we've just read. Okay, so we've done the checking for understanding, participating with me. On your Google form, you have a couple of questions about what did you understand of what you read um, after listening to me and what do you still not understand? So go ahead and complete that. That helps me because as I read them, then I can come back in the next video and check in with you and kind of recap on it. Um, but during this time, we want to focus mostly in French and uh, it's okay, we don't understand 100% of everything that we read, everything that we ever hear, um, that's life. So you've got to learn how to problem solve and deal with not understanding everything. But we do want to understand most of what we're, we're reading and hearing. So um, let me know so that I can guide you, but I'm not going to ex explain word for word every single detail. That's not how language works. Um, once you're done with that, it's also going to ask you to move on to numéro trois, which is find adjectives to describe people. So as we go through, I want you to, oh, we'll probably on the video, we'll do this in class, but on the video, I don't, you don't need to do this, but I want you to add the adjectives that you find to your list. So let's go back to um, that first page that we read, and you only need to do it based off of what we read today. So have a look at this page and tell me what um, adjectives you find, and an adjective is a describing word. So words that describe um, particularly describing nouns, describing people, describing places, describing things. Okay, so you could have, there's, there's quite a few which are the same as last time, so you don't need to add on ones which are the same. You're adding on new ones to your list. So adorable is the same as last time. If you didn't have that from last time, you can have that in there. Uh, relaxante, I would say, is new. That's uh, a nice one. It wouldn't really describe people. This is talking about the relaxing, like, breeze, so, like, the relaxing atmosphere, um, because they're up in the mountains in nature, so it talks about fresh air, fresh oxygen, relaxing breeze, atmosphere, and, you know, cute animals, like, everywhere, like in this picture. And we have some of the same adjectives here, triste. This one might be new for you, pauvre. So it's the opposite of riche, riche et pauvre. And then we have généreuse, which again was the same as last time. So go through, find the adjectives and add any new ones to your list. It might only be a couple on there this time today. That is okay. Um, and then come back to the video. And then the last thing that you're going to do is two truths and a lie. So based on the reading today, instead of doing a quiz I, and where I tell you true or false sentences, I want you to tell me true or false sentences. Okay. And you're going to tell me two true sentences in English. Let me write this down. Two true sentences in English and one lie in English. Okay. So the whole thing is in English. So um, you need to tell me what's true. So for example, true, and I'm going to, I don't really want to give you answers, but you could start with Heidi loves, what does Heidi love? Um, true, Peter is, describe Peter. And then I want you to tell me one false one. And I've run out of space in the bottom, so I'm going to write it up here. False. Heidi hates. What does Heidi hate? And make it up. So, for example, Heidi hates animals. That would be a lie. Because she doesn't hate animals, because we know that she loves them, because she thinks they're cute. So, um, tell me in English two true sentences and one false. In class, we're going to do that and we're going to go around and guess each other's and whatever. But you can't do that since you're working by yourself at home. So just do it on a Google form and then I will be able to use those um, in a lesson in the future. Actually, I'll be able to use it in next week's lesson. Um, and it's your participation. So 
have fun with today. Um, pause the video as you need to, complete the Google form as you need to, and then you're all done. Au revoir.